and just like that we're live hi guys happy friday night oh wait i was challenged to start the live stream off a very particular way it was always look on the bright side of life i've been walking around singing that song for the past week you know who you are that challenged me to do that and you thought i wouldn't and i did you're welcome all right, so I see lots of people are in the chat already. First and foremost, I want to give a special shout out to Laura Lynn from Mom and Pop Quilt Shop. She is a wonderful lady. I love checking out her channel. She's not always here with us on Friday nights, but I'm not always there with her on Saturdays. And I want to give her a shout out because she does have a wonderful channel. She does live streams multiple times of the week, but most importantly, she does something on Saturdays. And that's usually when I catch her. Sometimes I'll listen to her while I'm at work as well. She made a lovely wall hanging for me. It's hanging up in my studio. I will post a picture of that in the Facebook group. So you'll have to go over there to see what that looks like. And then maybe I'll share that during our So Until tonight. But for those of you that have not had the pleasure of meeting Laura Lynn. Everybody say hi, Laura Lynn. <laughs> and then she can drop her channel link in the chat because she's a moderator. We gave her a wrench so that she could promote herself. So do it. Go for it. Have fun. Of course, we do have some other folks in the chat who have that blue bold font with the little wrench next to them. And those are my other moderators. They all have channels of their own as well. And I feel like I haven't given you this spiel in a while. And we have some new folks around here. So let me just put it out there for you. They all have channels of their own and they'd love it if you'd hopped over and checked out their content. And if you like what you see, you can give them a little subscribe. That's the best way to tell a YouTuber that you love their content is if you hit the subscribe button and and you watch their videos. So if you want to get any of their links, I don't think Mama Pops is out there just yet. I need to go back and do that. But just do exclamation friends and it'll get you all the links. And if you need a link for a channel for somebody that's here, anybody with a blue wrench can drop a link. So feel free to promote yourselves. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, there's Tiffy. Hello, Tiffy. Hello, Ian. Oh, hello. I just, it's just going. Hello, mom. Hello, Mary. Hello, Joan. Hello, Linda. Hello, guess who, Nancy? Gosh, is the mic okay? Because I feel like it's too close. <laughs> What's your favorite color? Blue, no red. The Python nerd. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hello, Amy Dement. Hello, Misty Dame. Hello, Kathy Quilts. Hello, Cheryl Christopher. Hello, Candy. Hello, Jackie. Wow. I could just keep sitting here saying hello to all of you. Or I could sew. Hmm. <laughs> All right. What are we going to do tonight? Well, I take a sip of some coffee first because I am going to challenge myself to finish this before I end a live stream. And that does mean I will be overlapping with Donna a little bit. I think she's going to be going live just a little bit earlier than 10 o'clock, but this is also a really easy pattern. So I've been watching what you guys have been watching uh -huh. and I noticed Y'all love it when I do those jelly roll races. And I've also noticed y'all love it when I challenge myself to do something crafty other than just like a quilt block. Like, can I really get something done? Am I going to be able to make this fabric work? Is it going to work together and do it on the live? You guys like that. Those videos perform really well. And so I'm going to try to do another challenge tonight. This is slightly different. It's a challenge I've given myself, but it's not, um, it's not strictly unprescribed or uncoordinated. So I'm cheating a little bit here if I'm being honest with you. Let me take you back. So over the summer, we had what we called a fart. You know, fabric acquisition road trip. You guys fart all the time. Don't worry about it. I do too. So we came back from quilt retreat and stopped at several quilt shops and bought lots of things. Spent way too much money. It happens. Now, one of the quilt shops that we stopped at, it was So Classic Fabrics in Harrisonburg, Virginia. They have these packs called Half Pack Quilts. Have you heard of these? These are kind of awesome. They're little bundles of fabric, six, five or six half yard cuts in there for about $45 or $50. And you get to pick the pattern of your choice. They have like five patterns for you to choose from. All super easy, all super quick sews, all extremely beginner friendly in my mind. So we'll test that tonight. Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're all beginner friendly, but they have these, they have these kits, right? So you get your half yard cuts, they coordinate them for you. You just buy what you 
the kit that you like, the little pack that you like, and then you pick out the pattern that you want. They have several of them made up in the quilt shop. You point and choose, and then you get started from there. And so that's what I did. I bought a Tula Pink half pack from the store. And the reason why I bought this is because I had just finished my Tula Pink quilt. You guys saw me reveal that over the summer. That is the quilt that I did with Tiffany, Teresa, and Ian over on Tiffany's channel back in the spring. Beautiful. The pattern was Kaleidoscope Stars. I did it with Tula True Colors and line work and all. Oh, it was gorgeous. And I have gifted that to a friend of mine. But now I don't have a Tula quilt. Well, mom made me a Tula jelly roll quilt, so I do have one, but I wanted to replace that. So I bought this Tula half pack set of fabrics and figured I would try to sew that into a throw quilt or something. And then it just kind of sat there and sat there and sat there. And it was one of those things where that package of half yard cuts, I was looking at going, huh, yeah, I will get to that. I'm going to sew it, but it's going to be a quick sew, so I don't have to worry about it. And I thought, well, if it's going to be a quick sew, why not do it on a live stream? So what I've got for you tonight is a little command for the chatbot. If you do exclamation pattern, the link for the author of the pattern that I am... Oh my gosh, my dogs just startled me. <laughs> If you do exclamation uh, pattern in the chat, it'll drop the link to the sassysunflowerquilts.com website. That is who wrote the pattern that I am going to be doing. And I can show you this side because it doesn't have any measurements. Let's go to the overhead camera really quick. And you'll see this is what the layout is going to kind of look like. We've cut out really big rectangles and really big squares of my half yard cuts. And then right in the middle of here, we've got some squares that we're going to put an accent strip of fabric on either side to kind of frame that out and then borders on it. When this quilt is all done, when it's all pieced, it's only going to measure... Where is that? I know I saw it on here. Oh, 48 inches by 62 inches. So it's a throw quilt. This isn't a big quilt, but you could easily make it bigger by adding more rectangles and blocks. So exhalation pattern will get you a link to Sassy Sunflower Quilts. If you are curious about the one that I am working on, it is window pane. So let me show you the fabrics that I'm going to be working with tonight. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Let's do this. Yeah, here we go. All right, overhead view. So some of these I'm still going to have to slice. And I think that's a nice... Um, I think that's a nice overhead shot. So we've got three... Oh, pattern isn't working. 10-4, copy that. Is the rest of the bot working? Ah, thank you, Laura Lynch. She says, I love that transition between views. Thank you. You know, I had pattern in here, and maybe I don't anymore. Let's go take a look. Hmm, interesting. Did I delete it? <laughs> Did the command go away? I'm guessing it did. Let's add it back in. Exclamation pattern. I'm working on the window pane pattern from Sassy Sunflower. You can browse their patterns here. H. <laughs> Rest of bot is working. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate you. Sassy Sunflower Quilts.com. Awesome. All right, let's try. Oh, pattern is already being used by another. Oh, there. I just had it turned off. Really? <sighs> you guys want to laugh at me now? Tonight I'm showing myself <laughs> using the <laughs> window pane. There. Almost done. Confirm. Try it now. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate you. Let's get back to the fabric because technology does not need to be a part of this right now, right? So we've got, uh, I think, five or six half yard cuts represented here. I'm not sure how this one's going to play in. So um, I do have three or four four pieces of that one. There's three more here. I've got three pieces of the teacups. 
it's upside down. I forgot I changed that for you. I've got three pieces of the teacups. Let me just fix this because I need it to be organized so that I can get it the way I need it to grow. Okay, I've got three pieces of the teacups. I've got four pieces of this tiny dot, which by the way, this is everything to me. If you were in my room and you saw the blue wall I have, you'd know why this is everything to me. This print kind of sold me on the whole pack. I could have just bought the blender, but whatever. I'm not a fan of this print. I don't like it. But we're going to put it in there because it came in the pack. And then we've got the Mad Hatter. And then we've got the crazy psychedelic cats that look like you must be on acid to really understand what they're trying to tell you. Does anybody else see that or is that just me? So I've got about, I've got two of those, two of the Mad Hatter, uh, three of the roses, four of this, and then three of this one. And then we have these little squares that are going to make a strip in the middle, which will be bordered or framed out on top and bottom with this fabric. Now, I will tell you, I did add a little bit of dimension to this. The pattern said that these strips needed to be one inch. I made these one and a half just because I wanted that border to, on top and bottom of this to be a little bit thicker. So that's what I'm going to work with. And here's what we're going to be doing. And it's going to go together super quick. We need to just decide what our layout is going to be. If we come here and look at the overview for the entire pattern, I can't see the chat. Let me move it back over here so I can see it. If we come back over here and look at this, we can see that what we're building out out essentially is a long rectangle and a square and that square is exactly half of one of these rectangles so I counted this before and I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I need to have ten squares which means five of these fabrics need to be cut in half and I have four so this one since there was two of them I feel like I'm gonna pull two of this I'm going to pull one of the teacups. I'm going to pull one of this. <clears throat> and before I do anything else, I want to make sure that I have enough of the rectangles left. Because if I'm being honest with you, I cut this right before the live stream and I'm not sure that I cut it correctly. So when I come back over here and I look at the rectangles, I'm just going to count them really quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I should have ten. There are two of the teacups, two of this one, two of this one, two of this one, and two of this one. So I have my ten rectangles. I'm going to fold these and set them aside because I don't want to accidentally cut them. But I need to get out of these extras, I need to get 10 squares. So that means I need to have five rectangles. And right now I only have four here. My dogs are literally staring at me through my French door from the <laughs> laundry room and want to come in and play because somebody did not close the door to the laundry room. So we're going to take a really quick pause and fix that. Come on, puppies. No, no, let's go. Let's go. Good boys. Oh. Yeah, that's so the what I was saying is I'm going to need to get 10 and I have a pile of scraps over here left from the cutting. And so I'm just going to come in here and grab this extra one and that will bring me up to my 10. Does that make sense? All right, I'll set those out of the way, get this out of the way, get my Quilter Select ruler down here. Actually, is this a 10 by 10? Ooh, look at you. Yes. Okay, so these need to be, well, I don't want to tell you what the sizes are because that would be wrong, right? You don't want to give away the cutting instructions. That's part of why you should buy the pattern. So I'm just going to cut. And I am stacking all of these up together. I am just making sure to scratch the raw edges in line with everything else. And then I'm going to come in here. Perfect. 
Now I've got my 10 squares and my 10 rectangles. I have way too many rulers here. We only need one. Do you ever get that too where you're creating and you just start accumulating junk on your surface? You end up with 35 rulers, two rotary cutters, 50 pounds of fabric, extra spools of thread, and then you can't figure out why you can't see your desk. That's me every day and twice on Sunday. Okay, so if we look back over here at the pattern, the layout is really easy. What you're going to do is take a rectangle and always attach it on the short side to one of the squares. Simple, simple, simple. You're going to do that 10 times. And the only rule that I'm going to pay attention to is that I'm not sewing a square to the rectangle of the same fabric. I'm not going to worry about direction for this because I don't want to cause myself to have an aneurysm. So I'm just going to sew. I'm going to pull from the top of this layer. We're going to start with a teacup, which, by the way, the teacups are super cute. And I will pair the teacup with a not-so-cute rose. And we're just going to sew that at a quarter of an inch along that short edge. <laughs> Laura Lynn says, well, I'm glad you get to come and hang out with like-minded people who pets and smell fabric. There's nothing wrong with that. Not sure who that's in response to, but petting and smelling fabric is just as good as smelling books. Which, by the way, I did pick up a pamphlet from the quilting show today, and I smelled it, and it did not smell like a book, and I was sad. Or even a magazine, for that matter. It just smelled disgusting. It wasn't great. Want your teacup trying rectangles go sideways? Yes, they will. And I have no control over that. <clears throat> when I bought the kit, Amy, these were half yard cuts that were already cut. And the pattern instructions, the way they had you cut out your rectangles, you're going to get them sideways. So we'll just have sideways teacups. And if this really bothers me, I can continue adding pieces and I can always rotate the quilt. Nothing says that the top has to be the top. But to also combat the direction, I can set it up when I'm putting things together so that sometimes they're on the left and sometimes they're on the right. We're going to make it scrappy. Yes, Bill says this is tumbling blocks with a large scale. Kind of, yes, very much. Very much. All right, so I've got one done. I need to do 10 more. Because I'm not paying attention to which one is this one or this one, see, if I look at it, these are the same blocks, right? It's just this one has the square up here and this one has the square down here. And I can get this result by just flipping it around the other way. And if I don't care what direction my fabric is going in, then that means I'm free just to do my chain piecing. It frees me up a little bit, which sometimes, if I'm being honest with you, that's what you're looking for when you're in front of a camera. Whatever you can do to take the thinking out of it so that you can still make the project, engage with the chat, <laughs> and keep things going. So you can see right now I've got two that are the same. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way and I'll grab the next one down. We're going to sew this dot onto a teacup. And I did put a small design board up behind me so that maybe as I'm sewing these, I can start to show you what it would look like as we're putting the blocks together. You know what? As we go, I'll set them over here and pretend I have an Iron Man. Now I'm going to grab a big rectangle of the dot and a small square. Barbara Jean says, hello, Becca. How is Mama Nancy? She is doing well. She's actually in the chat tonight. So for those of you that don't know, my mom and stepdad have been battling a bout of COVID. Mom is on the med. My stepdad caught it with enough time to be able to take the antiviral. So he did the Paxlovid. My stepmom, or my mom, does not did not get so lucky so she's still battling all of this stuff but she started an antibiotic routine today or yesterday and she woke up today 
according to the conversation we had this morning, she woke up today feeling about a million times better. So prayers and thoughts that that continues would be appreciated. Tell me about your smiley face sewing blink. I wish I could. But I don't know his story. It says B-A-L-S-A-M-I-Q. Honestly, I think the story is I got him at QuiltCon with about a million other stickers and I don't remember where. I think maybe somebody gave him to me? But we should name him, shouldn't we? What's his name? Let's give him a name. And it can't be Bubba. Because <laughs> Bubba's the name of the machine. I don't know why I just pulled the roses off the bottom, but I did. My machine's name is Bubba, and Bubba is a girl, by the way. Hello, Elena. Oh, can't use this one with that one, but I can use this one. Buttons? Oh, let's call them buttons. <laughs> I mean, he kind of looks like a wobbly button, right? Circle, jump a couple of dots. We can't name him. Oh, how about the name Oscar? Okay, you guys. So you have to. I see Charlie. George. I love George. <laughs> um, okay, so Wilson. <laughs> I'm laughing at the names. Bruce. Uh, name him Sergio, Sue said. All right, Sue. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait, what was the one that made me laugh? The first one. Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Oscar, you may have heard me mention here or there, because apparently Laura Lynn remembered, my favorite Sesame Street character when I was growing up was Oscar the Grouch. And Laura Lynn made me a cross stitch of Oscar the Grouch and put some borders on it, quilted it, and sent it to me. And it is proudly on display by my long arm. And Oscar has a sign around him that says, if you don't, if you didn't bring chocolate or fabric, and he's holding up a sign that says, go away. <laughs> I mean, that's the rules for my sewing room. If you did not bring me to, if you did not bring me fabric or chocolate, don't be here. I don't want you. Don't need that kind of negative energy in here. Oh, Art Thread says your sewing room is so organized. Thank you. I enjoy a good organizing sesh. But I also enjoy making a mess while I'm creating. So there you go. Look at this. We I vote for calling him the crap. Of course you would, Mary. Mary wants to call him the Crafty Panda. I don't know. I kind of like Sergio and Buttons. That was Buttons. Bud was a good one, too. Keep them coming. We're going to name our little smiley face. But I kind of like him peeking out right there. I think it's fun because it's like, hi, don't forget to smile. Right? Like, there's always... I've been saying this a lot lately, and I believe it, and I've been singing it. Always look on the bright side of life, but... You know, sometimes life gives you something and you think there's no bright side. You just got to get the shovel and dig for it. It's a, it, you'll find it. It's eventually there. There's always a bright side to find. And that little guy reminds me of that. There's always a silver lining. It's time. We need a poll for the name. I Okay. Your favorite boy band name. Well, then it would be N-K-O-T-B. Duh. 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 Closely followed by BSB and NSYNC. By the way, could we just talk about like NSYNC? Are they going to tour? Like, please, somebody tell me. I have. Hi, I'm from Ohio. Oliver will be a cute name. Awesome, Don. I like that name. George or I, I like Oscar. I like Oscar. Okay, we'll do a poll. I'll set up a, a chat poll in a bit. We'll do that at intermission. Which allows me to get up and stretch my legs. 
Well, you talk amongst yourselves. Or vote on his name. <laughs> what are we naming? I missed it. This guy right here. See my finger? Hello? <laughs> I think Amy had asked what the story was behind him. And I went, uh, oh, yeah. They are. Hey, Ian, are you going with me? Are we are we are we going to fangirl? Come on, dude, let's do it. We'll get Alicia. It'll be great. It'll be a whole thing. Let's do it. Come on. Ian, Ian, Ian. <laughs> Charlotte says, howdy. How <laughs> you can come organize my apartment in reality is a sewing room that happens to have a kitchen and a bathroom. You know what? I know some people who are in the chat who have that exact apartment layout set up. And they are not unhappy with it. And I got to tell you, if I was living in an apartment, I would probably have the same accommodations. Here is a footstool for my guests to sit on. All I need is my chair and my bed. I'm done. Like, I'm not here to entertain you. <laughs> this is not your place. Was it real? I think you told me that. I think you told me that. Ian says, NSYNC was his first concert. NSYNC was my sister's first concert. I took her to that. And Jordan Knight was opening for them in Detroit when I took her. I remember she had to have glasses. Her eyesight was not great. And so I had bought, I was young, like 21, 22, whatever it was. I had bought us tickets to go see NSYNC. So I was going to take her to her first concert. She was so excited about NSYNC. And I was so excited about Jordan Knight. <laughs> um... Although NSYNC's great. So we get there and I'm like, oh no, she her glasses got broken or something. I don't remember what happened, but whatever it was, she was without glasses and I was terrified she would not be able to see the stage. And so I had talked to the people at the place and they let us move closer to the stage and take, um, take a seat that hadn't sold where we could actually see, see them a little bit better and... I will never forget. Like, that was awesome. I loved that they did that for us. That was great. The lady that did that was super friendly. 20 years later. <laughs> Bill said, if someone's going with you to NSYNC, it's gonna be my... <laughs> I'm cackling. That's great. So did you guys see Justin did a meme or a reel? A reel is probably the right word for it. I don't know all these young fangled words. Um, Justin did a reel on his Instagram and the he like remixed somebody else. It was like, tell me about that one time where you mispronounced a word and it never nobody ever let you live it down and he just comes in he looks at the camera and he goes me me and he walks off he said in a interview that he did i watched the hot ones interview i love hot ones i watched the i think it's hot ones it's the one where they eat the wings and answer the questions and sync was on there and they he was talking about that and he said that the people that they had written the song or whatever when they were recording it they wanted him to pronounce it may not me he said that was the direction he was given when they were recording so i guess he had to go out of his way to do that hello maritza definitely buttons no to buttons dot oh we could call him donnie Katie said she has never been to a concert in her life. Boop, boop, boop. This little Acorn Easy Press pen has turned into like the muscle memory that never will go away. And you use so much less starch because you're just putting it where it's needed. Nowhere else. It was Hot Ones. That's the name of the show. Cool, 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 cool. I don't know, Bill. I don't think my sister Alicia is going to let me take anybody other than her. So you guys are welcome to come with. But if Tony right now, if NSYNC tours 
and my butt is at any of the concerts and she is not there beside me, I will probably never hear the end of it. Just saying. It did. It did. Ian said, and look at that. Here we are talking about it. How many years later? I know. Who, I think he knew, like, in 1998 that the internet was going to be a thing and there were going to be these memes everywhere and it was going to keep it every May, every May 1st. It comes right back out, doesn't it? Lynn said, Patty Mac makes turned her living room into a quilting studio and it looks so nice. I do that. Hundred percent. I always feel like when I'm using this thing, I feel like when I draw the starch onto the fabric with that pen, I feel like it's not there, nothing's coming out, but then I touch the fabric and I'm like, oh yeah, it came out. So if you are using the Acorn Easy Press Pen and you keep pushing the nib in to let more liquid flow, you know what I'm talking about? just don't because you're wasting it i do it i shouldn't you don't need that much i feel like i overuse it oh time to take my pills i'll do that after the live stream or in the intermission we're like i think the quilt's like 50 percent done now our blocks are almost made Scrappiness is craftiness. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but you're welcome, I did. Hello, so Terry. My bet is on NSYNC and Backstreet Boys going on tour in one to three years from now. They will not do it without New Kids on the Block. Like, you can't. You can't be there without new kids on the block. I feel like there needs to be like the ultimate boy band tour. Every boy band from like 1985 all the way up to like 1999, like an 80s and 90s boy band tour. I'm talking boys to men, all of them. Oh, well, I don't think you, LFO you can't get, but anyway, whatever, you get it. I love that cup fabric. I love it so much I bought three yards of it and it's sitting on my shelf. <laughs> I missed to challenge you for this. Me? I did. <laughs> I did. I did. I did it. All right. So now we've got all of our blocks put together. And the next step is going to be to take two of each one and sew them together. And I'm going to show you on this back here because the pieces of fabric are a little too big. So what I'm going to do, if you can imagine, we've got one piece here. Now I'll move my chair out of the way so that you can see a little bit better too. In fact, why don't we just come in a little bit better, huh? Look at me with props. It won't stay here. Maybe? Stay. Don't move. Okay. So we're going to take one of those, and then we'll take another one, and I'm just going to try, going to try to not have two fabrics touching. But because I have a limited amount of fabric or limited prints, I can't always guarantee that. So this is what we're going to do. Do you see how that's laid out? We're going to make blocks that look like that, essentially. And we're going to need to do that. Look. One, two, three, four times. So we need to make four blocks like this with the square in the upper left and lower right. So this looks like a good one to sew together, so I'm just going to sew that together. There are no seams to nest, nothing to match up. 
So I'm just going to line up my raw edges and go. But first, I hate getting that in front of my neck. But first, I'm going to thread my machine because it came unthreaded. There we go. Mm, props for the props. <laughs> and Tana says, my first concert was the Righteous Brothers. How old am I? <laughs> All right. I went to the Quilting Expo in Fredericksburg, Virginia today. I'll be there again tomorrow. I'm taking a class from 8.30 to 10.30, and then I'll be hanging around until about, oh... You're not going to sew? After all that, you're not going to sew? Oh, you were sewing. My bad. Sorry. Sorry, Baba. Sorry, Baba. I'll probably be there until about three or four. Three, probably, is my guess. So if you see me around, say hi. Love to meet you. I'm taking Big Stitch Quilting with Erin from Love So Modern in the morning. And I actually took a class with her today and finally conquered my fear of her piecing. I made a couple of drunkards, well, a few drunkards path blocks, and I'm so proud of myself. Like, you guys, I sewed hers. What? That was great. Highly recommend. Hello, Kelly. All right, so I'm just going to do... Getting up. Let's move you over here. No, that won't work either. No, well, forget it. We're just going to drape it over here and I'll press them all with her. Coffee? Yes. Okay. The next one is going to be more of the same square in the top left and square in the bottom right. And I'm just going to do these top left, bottom right. You know what? It's going to be scrappy when it all goes together. There's probably going to be some fabric that's going to touch. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But. Ugh. The thing about working with big pieces of fabric is it does definitely sew together quicker because this is going to be done before you know it, but wrangling those big pieces of fabric sometimes can be a bit annoying, especially when you start off big. There was no little blocks to work your way up to a big quilt. It was just big from the beginning, but it does allow lots of open space lots of big blocks to do some practicing for free motion quilting hint 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 that is likely going to be the life of this quilt we're going to put it on the long arm and use it to practice some free motion quilting designs and i'm thinking about even doing that on a live stream if you guys would like to see me do quilting on a friday night live let me know in the chat all right that's two i need two more let me take a look at the fabrics that I chose. I've got a cat. I've got a Mad Hatter. I've got cottage roses. I've got teacups. I don't have one of these. So I'll take one of these. And why not another one of these? It's all going to have to get in there sometime, right? Teresa says yes. Jackie says, oh, trying to watch while our internet is being flaky. Stop it, internet. Stop being flaky. Um, yes, please. Long arm quilting sounds like a fun time. Okay, Laura, I see you. I have the tech to be able to do that. I just keep forgetting that I have the tech for that. So we'll see what we can get. I just went all wompy wonkus. That's an official sewing term. You heard it here first. 
it's that moment where your fabric got caught between your belly and the sewing machine table and so as a result it started dancing back and forth instead of going straight under the needle caddy wompy wonkus is that what i said wompy wonkus somebody make that do a sticker did i air sew did i real no yes some of it i did when did I run out of the bobbins? When I started saying wompy wonkus? Does it not like that word? Am I out of bobbin thread? Oh, sad. I lost bobbin chicken. And you know what? I don't know where my bobbins are. Huh. Well, that's a problem. Where'd my bobbin case go? Did you guys steal it? You took my bobbin case again. You did. You know what? Fine. Fine. I'll just, uh, apparently missing my snips, too, so I'll just use my scissors. I'll just cut the thread, because you can see this spool's empty, so. Wait, what did I do that for? Oh, I'm such a doofus. I'm gonna just... <laughs> whatever, 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 whatever. <laughs> I was like, well... Now I got a wine to buy up in, and I don't have an extra spool, and I could have just got up and walked across the room and grabbed a spool of thread. This is my last spool of 2600. I do have some weights over there, though. All right, let's re-thread the machine. We will wind one bobbin and no more than one bobbin because if it takes more than one bobbin to finish this project, I ain't finishing it tonight. Yes, if you stick your tongue out, by the way, when you thread your machine, it definitely goes a lot easier. So I highly encourage you to stick your tongue out, particularly if you... Stick it out of the left side of your mouth. Works better. Meh. I feel like the noises match the Monty Python theme from earlier. Start the live stream off singing, always look on the bright side of life, and now I'm over here making the same noises that the knights that say knee make. Meh. <laughs> he needed the bobbins for the tulip that he borrowed. I'm going to put my tulip under lock and key so next time he comes to visit, he won't be able to touch it. Joke's on you, Ian. I saw your shorts. Stealing my fabric. That's right, Marlon. And sticking your tongue out while cutting with scissors. Concentration. Yup. And Karen says, whenever I concentrate, the tongue comes out. It is ridiculous. Hey. <laughs> Amy, I know I like you already. The nice thing, me. Me. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> oh, that was great. Hey, where's this thread coming from? Pretty sure not where I would expect it to. This microphone's going to give me a fit. What do you all use for thread? All cotton? Yes, I only piece with Orifil 50 weight uh, cotton thread. I used to use Wonderfill 50 weight and I switched to Orifil because it was much thinner and so it was introducing less thread into my seam allowances and I felt like I was getting a better seam allowance out of it and my seams are laying flatter so I use 100% cotton 50 weight or fill thread a-u-r-i-f-i-l let's see if it sews oh you know what I forgot to do oil the bobbin Perfect, it sewed. 
Icky, icky. <laughs> Bill says, I'm a knight that says, icky, icky. <laughs> I really need to clean out the inside of this machine. I feel like that could be a whole satisfying video in itself. Does anybody else like seeing the link come out and just go, oh, oh gosh. I had somebody say at the, uh, I've, I've heard somebody say a few times that Aurafil is lint free. It is virtually lint three free. That's what I've heard them say. And I'm like, dude, it's cotton thread. Even though it's highly mercensized and really good cotton thread, it still leaves fuzz. You want to know how I know? Look at the inside of my machine right now. Can't get it to click in. It's like the machine didn't want the oil. There we go. Usually it's because I don't have it turned just right, which would have been the case. There, click. All right, I've got three. I think I said I needed four, so we need to do one more. I have no idea how I kept that straight. I did. I'm going to grab this one. Mm. Upper left, lower right. There we go. Icky, icky. Oh my gosh. <laughs> now that's stuck in my head. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome, Becca. What? The same there. I don't like it when it rubs up against my neck, and I always end up looking down. And it. I'm wearing a crew neck T-shirt. That's the problem. I need to start wearing V-neck T-shirts. It's why I was going with the lapel thing. You know what I'm talking about? The other microphone. But it feels like every one I had was low quality, and it was just really distorting the sound. So I've got to have this big black thing here. Hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yo, wait. I literally am having a brain fart because I'm looking at my setup. I'm wondering what microphone you're hearing me from. Oh, you're hearing me from that one. Hold on. I'm just going to... Holy cow. You're hearing me up here. I don't even need this tonight. I plugged in my shotgun mic. It's on my overhead. So it's like on a boom right now. And so it's picking up all the sound that's happening in the room, which... It's not as nice of quality as that mic. I just looked down here and saw that light was turned on. I was messing with it. I was messing with that for no reason. There, this probably sounds a little bit better, right? Does that sound a little bit better? It's probably a little bit quieter too. I can go back to the other microphone if this isn't working for you. Just let me know. <laughs> so Terry says, either way, we hear you. Now it's really low. Quiet. Got it. I'll go back. I mean, I'll be honest, that microphone makes my life a whole lot easier because I don't have anything anything um we'll leave it here because this is where it was <laughs> bill's trying to get me to sing the right stuff no i'm not gonna sing anymore tonight sorry bill perfect
we'll work on the mic situation for next week. But for tonight, this works. So now all I'm doing is coming in here and pressing these. I've got all of my big blocks made. And then we're going to make the um, middle accent row, which is going to be a lot easier. You're going to be able to see more of that on camera. So that's one block. I have this little step ladder that I need to get to the top of my shelves. In the past few weeks, it's been sitting over here holding my fabric. When I'm done, I just drape it over there. <laughs> oh, shoot. That iron kicks off some heat, huh? Ah, Ian said, I wondered why you sounded different tonight. So I'll tell you what happened while I'm pressing the blocks. And this is going to be more for the techie people in the room. Mac had an operating system update earlier this week and I downloaded it and installed it and everything was great but for whatever reason the version the Mac that I have with the the processor that I have does not work with the Rode wireless microphones when they're plugged in through USB which is how my microphones are normally hooked up to my computer. They're normally plugged in through USB and it's never been a problem. But for whatever reason, there's a bug in the newest operating system that makes them incompatible together and we're waiting for a fix from Apple. And so I've had to run the wireless mic into my switch, which is what reads in my HD, my uh, camera outputs and stuff and brings it into brings the video feed into the computer. But in doing all of that, I also pulled out my backup shotgun mic, also from Rode, in case you're curious, and hooked it up to my overhead camera, which is what you're looking at up here. And my switch lets me toggle which audio source I'm using. Every one of my cameras that plug into it can have its own microphone. And then I have two extra microphone jacks that can go in there too. Well, I have a microphone plugged into the camera that's above my little workstation here. And I have my wireless microphone, which is kind of hanging out over here. The wireless microphone is plugged in as the master mic. And then the shotgun is obviously hooked up to the overhead camera and when i looked over looked up at my switch i could see the red light was on for the overhead camera mic and i was like oh wait a minute that's the active mic this one's not so i'm sitting here fumbling with this I'm like oh it's too close to my neck it, i didn't even need that to happen because i was using this one the whole time doesn't sound in my opinion this is not as good of a quality as that other mic but I don't have the gain and everything set up for this mic to pick me up nice and loud and clear so it would be faint and I don't want to spend the tech time to figure that out. But I will fix it before next week's live. So just uh, that's what you got. All right. So now all of my. I got all of my blocks put together and the next step that we're going to do is make this piece right here. This is going to take when you're cutting all of your pieces out, you're going to cut out some squares. I don't want to tell you the sizes of them, but you're going to cut out about three squares from each one of your prints and you're going to use 11 of them to make this accent ribbon right in the middle. And I've already picked out the 11 that I want, so I just need to chain stitch these all together. So I'm going to do that and then after this is done, I'll take a intermission to go refresh my water and get up and stretch my legs, let YouTube run an ad so that it's not doing it at other times that are, you know, in the middle of what I'm trying to talk to you about. And then we'll come back and we'll see how this baby finishes up because I do believe it will be done tonight. So I'm sewing 11 of these side by side and all I, I'm not even worrying about whether or not I'm not worried about the placement of the fabric. I'm just going with the rule that I don't want two of them next to each other. 
Everything else will work itself out in the end. Scrapping quilts, in my opinion, should look random. And that's the whole beauty of having a scrappy quilt, right? That it's just kind of doing its own thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Good, I do have eleven here. <laughs> I got to tell you, of all of the fabrics that are in this little accent ribbon, I feel like the teacups is probably my favorite. When we come back from the intermission, I'm going to show you, I'm going to recover from a boo-boo I had while I was cutting. Spoiler alert, my pieces that go on the top and bottom of this row are not the size that they were supposed to be, but we'll recover from that just fine. Everything will be okay. All right, that's my accent strip. I'll put it up here and I'm gonna go refresh my water. All right, I wish there was a crossfade option. So when I'm done with the intermission, the music would fade out and fade back in. I'll have to look into that. 
because I don't necessarily want to leave it playing the whole time. I just want to give you a chance to take a break, to get up, stretch your legs, use the restroom, get a refreshed beverage, and then come back. Ironically, you guys are probably doing whatever you need to do and you're not stopping your life just because I'm sitting here. So let me rephrase that. That intermission is for me to get up and stretch my legs because sitting for two hours straight is not good, right? It's not good. So filled up my water bottle and we're going to get moving. The next step that we're going to do is press all of this. So I've got my iron still hot over there. I'm going to pull my pressing board in and I'm just going to press all of these seams to one side. When you're looking at the quilt, this does not require any of these seams to match anything because we're just going to put a border strip on the top and on the bottom. I just need to get them laying flat. I could press them open. I could press them to the left. I could press them to the right. I could press them in alternating directions. It really doesn't matter. Take your pick. I'm just doing this because this is the quickest and the easiest. Oh, it does change as I think. Uh, on my end, it doesn't. So thank you. I'm glad. I'll have to go back and listen to that. By the way, did we figure out a poll for what we were going to name the fun guy oh fun guy what if it's fun guy oh no i want it to be fun guy that's fun guy nope we're gonna call him fun guy we're not gonna do a poll sorry hi everyone this is fun guy welcome <laughs> like f u like how do you spell fungus f-u-n-g-i fun guy <laughs> I need to get out more. All right. So I told you about a boo-boo that I made when I was cutting this. And <laughs> here's the boo-boo. This was supposed to be, I think, my border fabric. And maybe some other things. And as you can see, it's just a bunch of one and a half inch strips now. I don't know what I did. I actually have a good idea what I did. I didn't pay attention to the cutting instructions for the pattern. And so what I should have is a piece of fabric that is width of fabric. And um, it should be wide enough to go this entire stretch. And you can see it is not. So I need to figure out a way. You already know the answer to this. I need to figure out a way to make it big enough. And so what that's going to mean is I'm going to grab two of these. I'm going to sew them together. I still don't think it will be long enough because if I fold this in half, this is still longer than that one piece. So I'm going to take six pieces. I'm going to piece three for the top and three for the bottom. I'm going to sew them together on that short edge and then I'll put one on the top and one on the bottom. And then these will go in my scrap bin to play with in a future project. I did get cut happy. What, what had happened, what had happened was I thought I was going to need this fabric because I did not measure twice and cut once on a couple of the pieces of fabric. And I was afraid I was going to run short. And so I ended up cutting up this half yard into the rectangles that I had before but then when I started looking at the pattern and dissecting it down I didn't need to do that so yeah it was entirely on me but we're all good all right so this is three pieces for the top now I'm going to do the three pieces for the bottom we'll go back to that overhead shot for you I know. Whoops. Um, also, while I'm doing this, I did grab a little black package and I want to tell you about this. We're going to show it here. Do you want to know what's in that black package? Me too. You want to know when I can find out? Tomorrow on Ian's live stream. So Ian is hosting a live stream. It is a Halloween themed project tomorrow at six o'clock eastern five o'clock central do the math for the rest of the time zones but six o'clock my time eastern time off kilter crafter ian and he is hosting a collab with me and Teresa and tiffany and himself and we're going to make a project you'll have to tune in to see what we're making and then you'll want to stick around and check out our channels after that to see how our projects finished up 
And he has mailed each of us this, a little package that has <laughs> keep out and don't open until live stream on here, a little sticker on it, and a little black poly mailer. I swear there's something hard in here. I feel it. It is not just fabric right here. Like that is hard. I feel it. It's right here. I'm not allowed to open it for less than 24 hours. Do you know how difficult it's been to be like, okay, Ian, I won't open it. He swears it's just fabric. I think he's lying to me. So tune in tomorrow and find out. Oh, Tiffany said her Ian, her package from Ian isn't that cool. Ian, what? Did I get the only special fabric package or did you give all of us cool packages, but in different ways? Is Tiffany's cool, but she just thinks mine looks cooler. Is that what it is? Six o'clock p.m., Sue. Six o'clock p.m. Six o'clock p.m. Eastern. All right, so now I'm going to take this big long beast and I'm going to sew this to one side of it. And because it's so long, I don't really need to worry. We're just going to sew it and then cut off the excess. I'm not going to pin because it's definitely longer than right below it. We're just going to sew. I do this with my borders a lot, and I think I make Mary print when I do this. I just lay my oversized fabric down on top of the quilt. And when I do that, I just make sure to let the machine and the feed dogs do all the work. I'm not giving any pressure. I'm not pulling on it. I'm not stretching it at all. And this is probably, I know this is not the way they teach you to put on borders, but if I'm teaching you how to put on borders, this is the way I put on my borders. How many of you in the, now I will tell you, I will piece, I will pin a border if it is exactly the length of what the quilt is supposed to be, or if it, it the rows are supposed to, they have points that they need to match and it's intricate, then I will pin. But if I know that my border fabric or my sashing is longer or wider, I just do it this way. Curious how many of you always pin or sometimes cheat and do this. And don't forget, next weekend we've got a couple of collabs happening too, since we're talking about things to tune in for. Next weekend on Saturday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, I'll be working on month two of Sewology, and Donna will be here with me. We'll be doing that together on a live stream here. We're doing this project over the course of a whole year, so it's going to take us a long time to get through it. And we're going to bounce back and forth on the even months, will be on my channel and the odd months will be on hers and then on sunday because <laughs> apparently i've got a weekend full of lives <laughs> on sunday october 8th we will be on my channel at 10 a.m and sean from the guy who sews is going to join me to work on some panda stuff so this weekend i'll be on ian's channel tomorrow night and then next weekend on Saturday, I'll have Donna here in the evening, and then I'll turn around Sunday morning with a live stream and have Sean here. We'll have some coffee, and we'll work on pandas for about an hour or so. Amy says, I do that too. My long armor never complains, and I, as I am her favorite customer. P.S. It's me. I'm the long armor. <laughs> Amy, you're a hoot. You're a hoot. I, I, my, Beth does a lot of my quilts and she never complains and says that the quilts are always really, like she says they're flat, they lay well, they don't have a lot of fullness in them. So I feel like it works for me. So, and I I know there are times where I can't do that. And in those times I will pin, but if it's something like this, I'm not going to pin it. <laughs> Amy said, ma'am, <laughs> my long armor is favorite customer. Yes, I am the long armor. <laughs> oh, you're a hoot, Amy. Now, 
Now, I will tell you, I'm not going to have borders on this quilt tonight. I'm just going to have the center of it done. And that's because I cut up my border fabric into those one and a half inch strips. And so I don't know what I want to put in the borders. I'm going to have to stop and think about it. Spoiler alert, I will tell you, I think it's going to be the teacups. Because I've got a lot of the teacup fabric sitting on my shelf. And it is directional. And I feel like I'll have enough of it to make the teacups always go right side up. So the inside of the quilt, they'll kind of be tipsy turvy whatever which way. But the outside, I can make them go the right way. So I'm going to come in here and put this under the camera so you can see it. And I'm just going to press. I'm pressing this. Oh, I really like that little window. I feel like I could do a whole quilt of just these windows. That's super cute. I'm just going to press the seams underneath that sashing strip that I did. And remember, my sashing strip is not as narrow as what the pattern called for. They said to cut a one inch strip for this. I cut a one and a half inch which is just going to give me an extra inch to the height of uh, the length of the quilt. And I think make it look, I really like this separation. So I think that's going to make it a little bit bolder. That's nice. Now what I'll do is get my pressing mat out of the way. This is how I do my borders, guys. If you're curious, I'm going to grab a ruler. I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the fabric that I know is straight. And I'm just going to cut off the excess just like that. And now I'll turn it around, do the same thing to the other side. Thank you, Laura Lynn. Lori says, my long armor is amazing. Is amazing. I can't wait to see it done. I feel like this one needs to go to the long arm with you guys and we can just have fun doing different designs. You can shout something out and I'll be like, uh, I don't think I can do that, but let's try. I think something like that would be fun. Look at that little, it looks like a film strip, doesn't it? Like, that's neat. I like that. <laughs> Teresa says, thanks. I have that dang song in my head. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, let's go back to our visual layout of our pattern. If we look at this, we've got our four patches that aren't really four patches. But remember, we made this block, this block, this one, and this one, and then we had our two strips left. I'm going to build out the top half of the quilt and the bottom half of the quilt by taking those two four patches sewing them together and then taking that orphaned two piece and putting that on the side. So here's an orphaned two piece. I only have two of them. I just need to make sure that the square is in the upper position. And now I'm going to grab this one for the top. And I don't want that one for the top because that would be all dots in the top. We'll do this one for the top. So I've got three seams, three very long seams to sew. Good night, Mona. Chair is way too low. <laughs> Laura Lynn says those cats look like they got into the good camp. I know. I feel like they are living their best of those nine lives. Now here's where this becomes beginner friendly for me. Thank you, Amy, for subscribing. I appreciate it. If you can see down here, I'm gonna push this up. 
it's off just a little bit, but you can kind of see that this is a jagged edge. Not all of my edge, not all of my raw edge is lining up perfectly. I'm not going to worry about that. It's not going to matter. I could come in with a nice long ruler and make this a nice straight line, or I could just have a seam on the back end when I sew that film strip piece in that has more seam allowance in some areas and less in others. Either way, it's going to be okay. There are no points that you're going to lose. There are no seams that are being nested. So you don't really have to worry about any of that. But if I took the time to pin, I would likely get better results. I can't be bothered with pinning. Sorry. I did enough pinning today. While we're doing this, if anybody has a channel they would like to promote, theirs or others, feel free to put a heart emoji if you have a channel that you would that you run and you would like somebody to drop your link. One of my moderators will tag you and then copy and paste your channel link into the chat so people can check your stuff out. So feel free to take this time to promote yourselves. stay. I had a science teacher in seventh grade that used to tell things to stay and I thought he was weird but here I am doing it. Where did my other piece go? I had dang near three pieces. Hello? That's five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh hi I'm sitting on it. It's on the floor. <sighs> <laughs> Pinning is for the week, right? I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Side of life. Oh gosh, there it goes again. Sorry, Teresa. Anybody feel like singing, I like big blocks and I cannot lie. No? I feel like you have to with this one. Like big blocks and I cannot lie. Hmm. Thank you, Tiffany and Teresa, for grabbing those links. I appreciate both of you. What Juki model is your machine and what rulers do you use? Anna's asking. I sew on, oh no. Okay, wait a minute. Before I tell you that, do you see where my problem is right now? I said I didn't want any two fabrics touching and if I do this here, it will touch. And if I turn it around, you see where this is happening? Look what will touch. That. So we're just going to go for the worst of two evils and we're going to do it over here. It'll be fine. I sew on a Juki TL2010Q. And the rulers I use, I do have Creative Grids rulers. I use those for a very long time. But recently, this year, I have started making the switch to the Quilter Select rulers because they're awesome. They don't slip. I love them. <laughs> Tiffany said, now back to my food.
Boom. I, I like the Coulter Select Ruler, as Amy says, because they read both left and right hand. Yes, they do. All right. The next step for this is going to be putting this film strip piece in the middle. So I'm just making sure that I've got... Eh, eh my squares in the right position now this is a spot where if i was weak and maybe i am i do not know yet i could pin maybe i will let's live dangerously let's get those sharp suckers out and see if i get stabbed why not 11 joni's asking me did you sew 10 or 11 squares together for the film strip piece i did 11. Oh, wait a minute. Did I do this the right way? I did not. Nope. Goes like I, but why? I'm getting a little confused. I know it goes this way. Oh, right. No. That's that way. Why am I having a hard time with this right now? I've used this thing for years, and now I can't remember how to do the thing. I thought I put it over top of the pins. Do I have the wrong size? Maybe I have the wrong size. Yeah, because it goes like that to do the thing. Whatever. I'll look at it later. there. Ooh, I just set the magnet on my phone. Let's hope I just didn't mess it all up. All right, let's see if I get stabbed and shed blood, shall we? <coughs> Tammy says, I love watching Off Kilter with Ian, Becca, Tiffany, Teresa, Tucker, Mom and Pop Cult Shop, and Beth Goody Goods. I just wish I could catch all of the lives, though. Hey, listen, I do not expect everybody to catch all of my lives or all of my videos. You watch the ones that grab your interest and make you happy. And that's about all I can ask. If you like it, watch it. And if you don't, that's cool, too. Oh, gosh. This is going to have some... We're gonna have to eat. Look, look at the problem. This, this piece, this piece, this one is not laying the way it ought to. The film strip piece is a bit longer, according to the pattern instructions that I'm following, too. The film strip piece is quite a bit longer. So I, oh, by a lot. Look at that. That's how much it's off. So, what I can do, I'm going to take a moment to go over to my pressing board, and I'm going to press this one, two, three, four, that is five. I'm going to go press the seam so it's nice and flat, because that'll make it lay a little bit longer, and then I'll come back and see if we still have a difference, and if we do, I'll show you how I'm going to overcome that. So, let me just walk over there. All right, so let's see what we got. I 
I used the same quarter inch all the way through and I know my cutting was I thought accurate so I'm going to lay this out I'm going to put it on top of the other piece I'm going to line up the left edge I'm just going to smooth it out gently with my hands and see what happens and I'm still coming over by a good I want to say a couple inches yeah that's a lot so here's what we're going to do I'm going to find the center so for this film strip piece I want to aim to cut the same amount off of either side so that this one doesn't look shorter than anything else I feel like if I cut if there's if it's two inches too big I feel like if I cut an inch off of the left and an inch off of the right it'll just make it look a little bit more on purpose so I'm just going to fold this in half and I'm going to give it a finger crease right here in the middle and then I'm going to set it aside and now for this one, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to fold it in half. Shake it out and I'm going to give this a finger crease. Now we're going to start from the middle and unfortunately now we do need to pin. So I can see that little divot where I just creased it. I'm going to come in with my film strip piece and I'm going to lay it right sides together and I'm going to line up that finger crease. Sometimes I can't see it and so I'll have to see it with my fingers. I'll line up that dent right there. And I'm going to put a pin right in the middle and then I'm going to work my way out to each side just by putting a few pins in there and lining up my raw edges. When I do this I'm going to let the fabric lay nice and flat on my table just so I don't have to worry about anything being stretched or pulled and I'm just gonna go every few inches stop put a pin okay and now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side since this side is pinned I can fold it over and move it out of the way this is a side that I want to lay out nice and flat and it does look like I'm getting the same amount off of this side so that's good we go now I'm going to bring this under the machine and I'm going to sew it <sighs> guess what I'm not going to sew anything because the machine came unthreaded again by the way I know why this happens for me if you have a Juki and you do everything on your desk the same way that I do I believe the issue here is because the needle is side loading meaning it's turned to the side the eye of the needle is facing in the nine o'clock position I feel like I brush that thread a little easier and it just pulls it out and so my solution has been not to use leader, leaders and enders but if I'm not sewing I'll put the needle in the down position but I don't always remember to do that So I'm just going to sew, was I even sewing there? I guess I was that long. There we go. So hard to see the thread sometimes. I'm going to come up to a pin, not going to sew over my pin. All the way down.
All right. I'm going to take this over to my iron. I'm going to press that down. I have an ironing board on the other side of the room that I can do for large pressing projects. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. Hello, Maureen. So I'm going to fold this in half again. I'm going to find the center. And here's another way you can find center. Once you pinch it and you see where that center is, you can just go ahead and pin, put a pin through just that one layer of fabric. And then you'll have a visual indicator of where the center of that is. Just like that. Now I'm going to pick up this piece. I'll turn it this way so that it's oriented the way I want it to be. Thank you so Becca and Mods, everyone. I just hit 500 subscribers tonight with your help. I so appreciate it. You are so welcome. Congratulations. Those milestones are everything, aren't they? Especially when you're just getting started. It's awesome. I'm glad you hit that milestone. So I'm going to fold this in half and find the center. I think there's a few other channels out here tonight that have milestones they're trying to hit. I know Katie's trying to get to a thousand by Christmas. Um, there's lots of folks out there. So feel free, like if you have a milestone that you, if you have a channel and you have a milestone you're trying to hit, let us know. We'll put your channel out there. And if folks want to help you hit that milestone, they can always pop over and subscribe. Now it's your job to entertain them and keep them. <laughs> Just because they subscribe doesn't mean they're going to stick around if you're not producing the content they want to watch. So if you earned their subscribe, make sure you're giving them what they're asking for, what they're looking for. I'm going to put my needle down in my machine while I'm thinking about it, just so that I don't have this fabric as I'm pinning it. Unthread my needle again. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to lay everything out. Look at that. It's just the film strip that's off because the raw edges for the top and bottom are lined up. So I'm going to pin at the edge. And I'm just going to, every few inches, I'll put a pin. And then after this seam, if you believe it or not the quilt the center of the quilt anyway is done so we'll hang it up behind us and we'll take a look and see how it came out and then we'll talk about what do i think about this pattern do i think it is really beginner friendly is there anything i would change what would i do differently and then maybe we can Go take a look to see what y'all have been working on in the Facebook group tonight. All right, one more seam, then we'll press it and we'll see where we're at. But I do think because of how big these pieces of fabric are going to be, I do think this is going to be an excellent quilt to practice some free motion quilting techniques. Thank you, Haiti, for subscribing. I appreciate it.
All right, I'm going to go press the seam and hang it up behind me. Thank you, Jackie, for subscribing. I appreciate it. So there is the quilt. It's not very big, but it's not supposed to be. I do think it's funny how I have a strip of teacups going right there. Uh, let's talk about this quilt. First, let me sit and look at it because I'm taking it in for the first time, just like all of you are. I, yeah, okay, I'm on the right view. Good. <laughs> I was like, wait, am I on the right camera for you to see the quilt nicely? Let's see, what do we think? Well, I think the first thing that I realize is this film strip is definitely, there's something going on with the directions for this middle piece because this is definitely wider than the other pieces. Now, I don't think it was a cutting mistake, but it could have been. So we'll just leave that there. What would I do differently about this? Well, I would make it bigger. I would definitely want to make it bigger. I would also want to introduce more fabrics because I feel like there are definitely areas like this block in here where I'm just basically making weird shapes instead of having the rectangles that I would like. I would like to see more visual, more variety. So I would like to see this with maybe some fat quarters rather than half yards. Because if I did this with quarter yard cuts, right, then I would double the amount of fabrics represented in the quilt. I think this would be a really neat idea to do with like one of those, um, what is it? The java boxes from cotton cuts where you get 12 fat quarters this would be really good for that it's definitely easy to do i did this in an hour and a half and i spent about half an hour before the live stream starching well maybe an hour all told starching and cutting fabric so overall not bad what do you guys think thank you so for subscribing jenna i appreciate it good night mary <clears throat> so that's the quilt behind me there are the borders are missing and as we talked about earlier that's because i cut the border fabric into one and a half inch strips but you know what i could do to help salvage that i could take that quilt i could take those one and a half inch strips and make them an inner border and then do something really big in the outer border yes katie i just see hey becca with like Three question marks. <clears throat> Bill says, I love it. I'm going to do it with Christmas fat quarters for my wall in my living room. It would make a good charity quilt, Melinda. Absolutely. <laughs> Tiffany said, I think I am proud of you, Becca, because you did a whole project in a live. Yay! <laughs> Mal says, what does subscribing get you? It gets you notifications when I go live or post videos, and it helps me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. But other than that, it just, it helps get my videos in front of you, and it's all about the views. It's really not about the subscribers. <sighs> the Becca wave when it comes to channels. I have no idea what that means. We'll talk about that. Tell me later. I don't know what that means. Would this work with a fat eighth bundle? Um, 
That ate fundals. I think so. I actually think so. So I don't want to give you the cutting measurements because that that I I think you could do it with a fat eighth bundle. And you know what? I'm thinking in my head, like if you just modified some of the cutting instructions, you could make this for a fat eighth bundle. And the reason why I'm like, ooh, I have an idea is because I have some fat eighth bundles that I don't know what I want to do with them, but I wonder if I could do this pattern with those and just change up because the fat eights are going to be nine by 18, which is if you starch could cause a problem. And so I feel like I would want to change the dimensions a little bit. You still want the rectangles and squares for sure, but maybe they need to be a different dimension. And then I would want to look at that centerpiece and really kind of think through, okay, is this the best way for it? And I almost feel like I love that element so much that I would kind of like to see it on the top, the bottom, and in the middle. I would like to see it break it up a little bit more. I really like that film strip in the middle. Math Geek says, looks good, reminds me a bit of the double slice layer cake. It would make a good picnic quilt, Donna says. Yes, absolutely. All right, so let's do this. Uh, June says, I love it, and it would be easy to mix up as much as your heart desires. Absolutely. Like, you can make it simple. You can make this a monochrome quilt really easy. You could make this a mon like just two fabrics. That would be neat. If you figured, like, if you just did solids, like a black and a white, ooh, and then maybe, listen, I'm getting really excited here. If you thought about this, right, just made that all black and white. And then the center squares can be the black and white, but the strip on the top and bottom, what if that was like a bright red? Could you picture that? That, And then you just did a bright red inner border. That would be nice. I'd love to see that. I don't know why all of a sudden that was like, oh, do it this way. But you, like, that would be really neat. Yep. You can do as many. Oh, nine by 22. Yes. A fat eighth is nine by 22. I'm thinking... <laughs> 18 by 22 so I was combining but the you you could starch you should be okay but I will tell you I won't want to tell you all the cutting instructions but I will tell you that the pattern does have you cut out some pieces that are nine inches by another number and so depending on how you lay things out in it's nine by 18. The pattern has you cutting some pieces out that are nine by 18. And I can't, you're not gonna be able to always rely on getting that out of a fat eighth if they cut that fat eighth wrong. Cause all it takes is just a couple of threads and then you're not gonna have the full eight, the full nine inches out of that fat eighth to cut. And so I would want to change the dimensions slightly. It doesn't need to be anything big, but if you went down just to cutting everything at like eight by whatever, you would obviously have to shrink up that middle row. But if you use the technique that I just showed you where you pin in the middle and just cut off the overhang, you'll be fine. Yeah. Jelly roll strips could work as well. Yep. You could also do this with some orphan blocks. What if those squares were orphaned blocks that you haven't done anything with and the rectangles were just some other scrappy pieces? That'd be cool too, right? Lots of uses, lots of things that you could do with that. All right, so let's go take a look. It's 9.43 and I've got to get up early tomorrow because I'm going to the quilt show. I will be at the Quilt Expo in Fredericksburg and I want to be, I got to be there at 8.30 because I'm taking, oh my goodness, can you believe it, a big stitch quilting class. Like I am going to quilt by hand tomorrow. I'm super nervous, super excited, super don't know how I feel about being there at 8.30 in the morning when it's about a 45 minute drive away. But I'm really happy because my friend Erin from Love So Modern is teaching the class and I want to be there to support her. So super excited about that. But before we go, I want to see what you guys have been working on. You've been watching me work. You've been listening to me jabber. I've been getting up and doing all the work. 
now it's time for me to see what you've been doing. So if you have been doing anything, enjoying just watching the live stream, whatever you've been doing tonight, show me. This is your chance to show me what you've been doing while I have been here working my booty off for you. Exclamation Facebook in the chat will get you a link over to my Facebook group. Take a picture with your phone, upload it to the Facebook group, and we're going to go through what y'all have been working on right now. Let's get it. So here we go. We're going over to so and tell. There we go. So I was peeking around in the Facebook earlier. So we'll we'll get to these pictures because they are there. <laughs> Let me just refresh the screen and see what we got. Bill says, I want to learn big stitch so bad. Bill, listen, I got you. I got an idea. Let me see if I can. I got you. I got you. Let me talk to Erin. We need to do another collab anyway. It's been a minute since she's been here. We've been talking about getting together and doing some things. I bet I could work out a workshop on a live stream where she's working, walking us through Big Stitch Quilting. That would be fun. Let me see if I can talk to her tomorrow. If you guys would like to see Erin Grogan from Love So Modern come back and teach us to do something like that, let me know in the chat. All right, so the first thing up that we have is from Christine Hewton. She said this is the last tulip pink quilt top that she made. I like that. And that's with that line work layer cakes. That's nice. It's kind of like an attic window with some pops of color. Bye, Amy. Have fun at Donna's. <laughs> Dennis, Denise says, you're brave. I'm not a hand sewer. I'm not either. But big stitch quilting looks like it could be fun. Listen, after, before today, I didn't think I would ever do any sort of curved piecing. And I did, and I enjoyed it. So we're going to lean into that and see what she can get me to do tomorrow. Christine says, these are some to Sally Tomato purse kits that I made. Oh, so nice. Look at that with some Everglow. Beautiful. Melinda says, I met Erin at the quilt show yesterday. She's so nice. Isn't she awesome? She's amazing. Love her. Christine says, I spent the evening hand sewing, finishing touches on my seven-year-old granddaughter's baptism dress. By the way, for those of you that pre-ordered her book, thank you. It does ship in November. If, in case you're worrying, wondering about where it's at, it's shipping in a couple of months. So it should be coming to you soon. This is from Susan Yearouts. She said this was her second New York Beauty, smaller that I made for a guild color challenge. I drew a blue paint chip and it got a blue ribbon at my county fair over Labor Day weekend. I couldn't share it earlier as some guild members watch your lives. I also hand quilted it. Now she can share it. Very pretty. So nice. And congratulations on that ribbon. Denise says, I'm working on my granddaughter's in the hoop quilt changed to a purple way instead of turquoise. Does your granddaughter love purple more than turquoise? Because I love the turquoise. Sandra, I will be there tomorrow. I don't know what color shirt I'll have on, but if you see me, hear me, feel free to stop by and say hi. I'll give you a hug. We'll chat. Take a picture. It'll be great. K Mood says, I'm working on month four of Among the Stars again in three different colorways. Oh my goodness. Three colorways. You are brave. Danelle has one block down and only needs four more than a border, sandwich, quilted, and onto binding. Beautiful. Michelle did a film strip row on her son's t-shirt quilt. That's awesome. Nice. Nice idea. Debbie Dunn says, tonight during Becca's Live, I put binding on a baby quilt in the washer now and then pieced this baby quilt. Still need borders, but I'm not 100% on the fabric that I pulled. I kind of like all the sock monkeys. Those are cute. Karen says, I have so many scraps from the dress a, dress a Girl and Quilts for Kids projects. I made some of them into some more quilts. I love seeing what everyone posts in this group. Thank you, fellow quilters. What a great idea to use up your scraps. Have a memory quilt of all the charity work that you did. Oh, so pretty. 
Nice job, Karen. And there's a lot there. That's a lot. Shirley says, my butterfly quilt is in progress, a.k.a. I am around. Hi, Shirley. Let's take a look at those butterflies. I love butterflies. Tiffany loves this quilt, too. I know she's sitting over there looking. Whatever she was doing, she has stopped, and she is now looking at the screen. I guarantee it. And I know which one would be her favorite, and I know which one would be my favorite. This blue one in the bottom is my favorite, and the one, probably two above it, would be one that she would like, I would think. I know Mary would like that one, too. And then Ian... If he were to pick one, he loves blue. So I, I think maybe, you know, that's funny. Mary and Teresa both love purple. Donna loves blues. Ian loves, it's always, it's blues and purples in the group. Like everybody's either blue or you're purple. <laughs> I'm trying to get it to close. It wouldn't move. Aw, Linda Robinson posted a picture. I don't know who this is, but I'm guessing that's a quilt that she made for her. I love it. <laughs> is she really sleeping or was she posing as sleeping? <laughs> a folded star. Is that a folded star hot pad? We need to do that one night. Teresa Smith said, flat Nancy checked out the new clapper to make sure she was really flat. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's refresh the screen and see what other items have been posted to the Facebook group. Love to see what you guys have been working on. They are FPP Liliella. Got it. Okay. They're beautiful. Nice, nice job, Shirley. Continue making FPP daisy blocks, chain piecing four blocks at once tonight. Not quite finished yet, but I'm getting there. Four blocks with two flowers each. So four, so eight flowers and eight stems and leaves. Judy says she is working on blockhead number five. Sometimes when these load, by the way, I'm not, I'm just sitting here looking and digesting like the, the project. I'm just taking it in and I don't have words because my eyes are just absorbing. Like this moment right now where I'm just taking this one in. And contemplating whether or not I want to do moto blockheads. Katie says, I missed most of the live because I was picking these up. I'm going to use them to build an ironing station. Are those treadles? You know, you can get your legs working, get a little leg workout on a treadle. Ask me how I know, because I got a fidget desk. Judy says, these were leftovers from my Hunter Star blocks, and she used them to make a small quilt. Christine Davis says that she finally finished her nephew's quilt. The space fabric in the stars is probably 30 years old, and this is the first time that she ever long-armed a quilt. Well, let's go see what your quilting looks like. You can't say that without us zooming in to see what you did. Oh, you did a great job. And I kind of love that border fabric. Ian, are you seeing this border fabric? I think you need some of that border fabric. Lily says, I'm working on my scrappy Liberty fabric quilt. My friend got me the fabric while in London, and right away, I knew I was going to make her a quilt with it. Oh, I have a friend that I grew up with who's a flight attendant, and he went to London years ago and brought me back some fabric from Liberty of London, and it was amazing. But that was before a lot of stores over here carried it. Oh, <laughs> baking. I did some baking. Can I have some of those, please? Ooh, Alphabet will work it into a quilt. Doing some hand embroidery. Nice. Mary Jo Neal just finished this quilt. 
that's super beautiful. I love that inner border. I need to do that in a quilt soon. So Terry says she's rebuilding a vintage sewing machine. This was today while working on the motor. Wow. I wouldn't even know what to do with that. I don't even know if I know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Aww, Jennifer, she said, yeah, today was rough. Enjoyed watching in the horizontal position. Oh, poor Jennifer. And then we're back to that first post that we had earlier. And we've already seen this one. So I oh, we've got one more member request. So we'll get you, Becky Bonanno. We've got you in. Feel free to share with us what you have been working on. And while we're doing that, we've got a post from Suzanne Moore. Project for Vacation, a 1924 Red Eye. Destined for a treadle. All locked up. But she's a tough old girl. Wow. She's seen some better days, huh? Look at the cord, the fraying on the cords. So when you restore this, you're going to have to take the whole thing apart and update all the electrical components and everything too, right? Oh, you said destined for a treadle, so you don't have to worry about the electricity. <clears throat> Let's refresh and see if Becky Bonanno posted a picture that she would like us to share. It does not look like that. That's okay. I'll just change this to new post to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope, I did not. All right, guys. So here's where we stand. I am pretty much sure that it is time for me to go to bed because it is four minutes to ten and I gotta get up early. So here's what you can do. Where can you go from here tonight? Well you can go over to Donna's because I believe she's live right now and I'm gonna go out to YouTube land. I'm gonna see if I can find her See if I find, there we go. I'm going to grab the link for her live stream. The new Lucida is an optical drawing aid that lets you trick. I apparently just plopped into her live. <laughs> I'm going to grab the link for that and I'm going to drop it into my live chat here. There you go. So. Uh, you know what this means. Parting is such sweet sorrow. But I got a quilt show to go to tomorrow, and I got a live stream to prepare for tomorrow night. So you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Tom is live. You can go over there. Have fun, you guys. I'll see you all tomorrow night at Ian's with Tiffany and Teresa, and then I'll see you Tuesday with a special video recapping all of my favorite quilts from the expo. I'll see you guys all then. Bye.